PIC Computer Science video number 15 where we look at input and output devices. First of all input devices, some key general things to know about input devices for your exam. Input devices are hardware or peripherals or devices that are used to put data into a computer and data is a key term there. Uh, we'll talk about exactly what that means and why it's important here in a short while. Um, in exams you'll be typically asked about which input devices would suit given scenarios and why. On this screen we've got some examples of manual input devices. You'll be familiar with many of these and use many of them on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, there are many others as well. Why are they manual? Well they're manual because they require um, some interaction with a user in order for some data to go into the computer so a human has to operate them for them to be useful. Same applies to these automatic input devices. Um, you won't need to have in-depth understanding of how the insides of them work but you would need to be able to suggest any of these for a given scenario uh, and you're more likely to be uh, less familiar with these type of input devices than you are the manual ones. Uh, so let's talk through them. A magnetic stripe reader at the top left, used hardly ever now, uh, but used to be used in shops to automatically get people's credit card details and number from a credit card into a computer. Now, we tend to use chip and pin readers for these and you'll have seen those in use in shops. A magnetic ink character recognition system would read um, magnetic ink on checks and we might have seen these used in banks a few years ago but we hardly ever use checks now so we don't see much of those. Barcode readers we see are probably on a, a daily basis when we're in shops the barcode scanner reads the barcode number uh, on a product and it goes and looks the product of it, that number up in a database and returns the products details and price. OMR optical mark recognition um, recognizes marks. It recognizes positions of pencil marks on paper and it compares those marks to a template and these are often used in multiple choice exams and seen a lot in shops where people are choosing their lottery numbers. OCR, optical character recognition, is where a scanner will scan a printed document and will recognize the text in the document. So it will scan a letter and it will look up um, possible matches in a database for that letter. It converts the letter into a bitmap first, uses that bitmap information to search a database to look for letters and basically digitizes uh, hard copy text. So it turns any text that's on paper into an electronic format so you maybe could edit it in a word processor for example. Now people with a keen mind for this sort of thing might argue that these automatic input devices aren't really automatic at all um, because they all generally require some um, interaction with a, a human user. A human user's got to use most of these in order for them to work and um, although a barcode reader might automatically read that number from a barcode um, with the chip and pin reader it might automatically read a card number off the card but the human still has to do some manual input. So I think we could probably say that the example shown on the screen could be deemed as being almost semi-automatic input devices because they all require some form of uh, manual human um, interaction with them. I think the thing to think about when differentiating between these and these is that these will read some data in some way automatically whereas with these uh, the human inputs all of the data. I think that truly automatic input devices might come in the form of those sort of devices that just sit there automatically read um, something and store it into a computer without any human input and we might typically find these sort of input devices in situations such as weather stations where various input devices constantly and frequently um, 
read weather measurements, whether it be um, wind speed or pressure in the air or other things as well. So if you pause the video at this point, you can just have a quick read about those different devices because I think they're good examples of truly automatic input devices. Now we said that you would have to suggest input devices for a given scenario. So if imagine if you had the scenario where somebody uh, wanted to um, measure the performance of a sprinter or a runner or something, then these might be the types of input devices you might suggest for that scenario. So these are very specialist and Examboard might expect you to know about some of the specialist type of input and output devices. So it'll be worthwhile reading around this subject as much as you can. In terms of output devices, general key things are hardware, peripheral device, again, but this time we used to get information from a computer to show the results of some processing, to show the state of software, and sometimes can let hard copy be produced, i.e. printouts. Again, you'll typically be asked about which output devices would suit given scenarios and why. Here are some examples of output devices that you might be familiar with. Some that give on-screen output, some that will give printed output, some that will give audio output. But there are many others. These include the actuator, which uh, would connect up to a computer with a cable a bit like this one, and actually would act as a motor, so it could pass energy on and power something mechanical in order to work. Again, you won't need to know about the inside workings of any of these output devices. Just say when you would likely use them. Now, some great further reading to do regarding this would be to look up the difference between data and information. The fact that data has no meaning and is just random uh, pieces of, uh, well, data is about the best way to describe it, whereas information has some meaning. It has some context and can help uh, tell somebody something about a situation. Hope you enjoyed the video about input and output. See you later.